In Syria, there is little hope that a broken ceasefire will be revived. Since late last week, Russian and Syrian warplanes and troops have been hammering Syria's largest city, Aleppo. Elizabeth Palmer was in Aleppo when the attacks resumed. At the start of the week, we were watching a student party from a rooftop when the war reignited. Those are shells falling on rebel-held Aleppo, just after the Syrian army declared the ceasefire was over. Soon, the warplanes were up too, bombing. The number of dead and wounded, which had fallen to almost zero, rocketed up. The front line of this civil war runs right through the center of Aleppo. Armed opposition fighters control this side, and Syrian regime forces and their allies are here. 13-year-old Aya lives on the very edge of the government side. This curtain here, what, what's that for? Uh, there are here uh, snipers. The snipers, just a few hundred yards away, are opposition fighters who, over the past four years, have aimed their weapons at Syrian army positions deep in this neighborhood. Did you lose some friends in this war? Oh, yes, I've lost many, she says. Some were killed by mortars or snipers. Some just left the country. Many of those who didn't make a run for it are now living in the ruins of war in desperate need. The ceasefire was supposed to let humanitarian aid reach them, but the main delivery route into Aleppo has been a battleground for months. To let the aid flow, all sides, including the Syrian army, were supposed to pull back. We've been hearing the sporadic boom of artillery here in Aleppo. Clearly, this ceasefire is not perfect, but it is good enough. Uh, it has now been renewed for another 48 hours. The bad news is that no aid is moving. Because the negotiations to secure the road failed. In a war this savage, it's hard to sort fact from fiction. And it got even harder this week when a U.S. airstrike hit Syrian soldiers. By mistake, said the Pentagon. Allah Akbar! A few days later, a Red Crescent aid convoy was attacked. You see, bombers, as a, as a aid, bombers, bombers, aid from the UN. The U.S. says early indications showed the Russians were responsible, something Moscow furiously denied. But public opinion in this country is shaped by Syrian state media, and the villain on its airwaves is always the United States. Yaman keeps an open mind, but he does understand why most Syrians don't or can't. The United States does not have a good reputation in here because of Iraq, because of, because of this, you know, area. People don't like you. I'm, I want to be very honest. People don't like you here. But what Syrians also believe is that America can make a big difference to the outcome of this war. And they think that the U.S. should use its power and diplomatic skill to help bring peace. Vlad?